Welcome back everyone. In this video we're gonna find out how good is actually the VX wheel high side switch for lights. I shipped about 21 of those in different parts of the world. Thanks to everybody for your support. I hope it will serve you well. But there has been some concerns about the inrush current of this design and in this video I want to show you how capable the switch actually is about the inner rush. I don't know what's the limit, so we're gonna find it out together. The only testing done till now was me using this switch in my board for a little bit more than half of a year and it turned out to be totally fine. So this was the deciding point for me to get the switch out for other people to be available. Here we have two switches, two DC converters, two sets of lights individually connected to a 84 volt charger. Maybe some of you are gonna say the charger is not providing the same inner rush as the battery, but I think it's totally fine. While uh, we're gonna add additional capacitors to see what is actually the limit. We can change the, the speed here so it clicks even faster, but we want it to be slower so the capacitors really discharge and the inner rush is really full. That's kind of the idea of this test. With one DC converter and two LED lights that consume about an amp and a half, it works pretty reliable on 84 volts. So I have no trust issues here. While if you use more DC converters or way more powerful lights, then I wanna see what's the actual limit of it. So for the initial test, I'm gonna add one capacitor of 180 microfarad on the charger side so there really won't be an issue with the charger maybe providing less power than the battery and the same capacitor we're gonna use it on the DC converter side so basically the switch will discharge this capacitor to this one throw the switch and we will see if it survives or not maybe we can start the test by checking how big of a spark this capacitor creates when it's connected to 84 volts. It's for sure way more than the DC converter itself creates. Okay, let's add it. Now we have the capacitor before the switch. Now let's add it after the switch. Okay, something blew up. But let's find out what actually blew up. Is it the fat or is it just the small fuse? Because we have a small fuse here. So maybe this one blew up. I don't know. So this is the switch we just blew up. And I checked it out with a multimeter. And uh, the fuse that's here just blew up. This fuse is uh, rated 3 amps and it's slow blow so in the normal operation you should have no problem with it but as you can see it probably saved our switch from a stupid capacitor test therefore you should keep an eye on it if you do any stupid things probably it will blow up so for this test to be continued I will not change this fuse but I will remove it and see what the transistor can do without the fuse as you can see I removed the fuse and just put some solder above it to short it and let's see if this switch will now work once again. Okay, the switch works once again meaning we didn't blow anything else but the fuse which is actually a very good sign so that the fuse blows up before it blow up other things. But now let's add the capacitor once again and see if without the fuse this thing actually survives the inner rush of this capacitor but I'm gonna for safety just turn the switching off reconnect and start it once again and you can see it works with this chunk of a capacitor we can already see by the lights that the capacitor is discharged before it switches on again but let's just uh, measure it to be sure and I will make it a little bit slower so we actually see some numbers some 3 seconds 3 seconds per switch so we have uh, 
83 volts and when it's off we have basically zero okay four volts so the capacitor discharges almost completely and the inrush is basically full meaning this switch works with a capacitive load four times bigger than the usual dc dc converter ones so that's a big thumbs up for it next level we have capacitors of 560 microfarad. Let's change it. Everything still works, but this is now on the input side. Put this capacitor, the big one, on the output side, and let's see. Seems like it's working. I'm actually really impressed because that's a big capacitive load. Let's make it a little bit faster. You can see how these lights now turn off with a delay because there's some energy in the capacitor left for them. We can again make it go slower and see you have 83 volts and down to around 5 when it's done I'm quite impressed now I don't know what to do because all I can say is this switch works pretty well and I can leave this on for like an hour or so it's not a big deal I'm quite confident if it works for a few clicks it will work even further should we blow it up today? What do you think? Because I'm gonna try with this without you asking for it. Give me some time to fix the cables. In the meantime, this can still go on and I'm gonna be back when this is ready to connect. Okay, welcome back. This was working, but I switched it off because we don't wanna get distracted right now. We have 60 volts on the capacitor right now because I have a 60 volts power supply there to charge it Let's see the spark of discharging 60 volts from this Pretty big uh, I'm gonna charge the capacitor to 60 volts with a power supply then connect it to 84 volts to the charger because I don't want to blow up the charger I really need this one. So I'm gonna connect it very carefully then I'm gonna connect one on the DC-DC converter side. I think we're gonna blow up everything, but uh, this is science and fun, so why not? Let's see. Okay, I managed to connect the capacitor on the charger side without blowing up the charger by pre-charging it on another power supply slowly to 60 volts. Now you can see we have 84 volts on this big capacitor. Now I'm gonna add the same capacitor here on the DC-DC converter side. Everything's connected, ready to go. To be honest, I think it's gonna blow up pretty bad, but let's find out. What? It actually works. And as you can see, the lights stay on for a lot of time because it's a big chunk of capacitor. I honestly can't believe it. I really can't. I wanted to blow it up for you <laughs> and I just can't. Let's make it even slower. Bam, 84 volts. Now switch it off slowly. Off. Down to 8, 6, lights are off, the, those one, those ones, and back on. I actually can't believe it. It's the same on this side and on that side, so the charger is not a problem because it gives basically full power from this one to this through the switch. The lights are turning on. I don't know what to say. I'm actually impressed. I thought it's gonna blow up. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think the test is not only passed, but amazingly passed. 
I'm for sure not gonna change the fuse. I'm gonna leave the 3 amp one for you. And if you break my switch, be sure to check the fuse. And now we know where it is, because it's probably gonna fail first. But other than that, I got a new batch of PCBs coming next week. And if you want the switch, let me know. Thanks, bye. I really kinda want this thing to blow up just for the show. So on this switch, I have a weaker transistor than I normally use. So let's try the weaker transistor with a smaller capacitor first. Uh, the fuse is already gone, I already put it away. So let's check this one. Okay, as kind of predicted, it works well with the small capacitor, it's not a big deal. And this transistor is also not bad, it's just, uh, you know, a little bit weaker than the one I normally use. So maybe I'm gonna stick with this one because being able to work normally with this capacitor, for me this is a test pass for this transistor as well. But because we wanna blow up things here, let's just take it away. Connect this bad boy and see what the weaker transistor has to say about this test. Don't do this at home, please. Yeah, it's, it's broken. It was nothing fancy to see, but at least we blew up one transistor. It's probably dead because it's having power straight away in, even if I turn on the output of the clicker, it's still not, the lights are not fading down. So this transistor is gone, but uh, sorry, there's no big boom show. And I'm still not sure if I'm gonna uh, supply the switches with the better or the little bit smaller transistor, because even the smaller one can handle this and I think it's more than enough. So we'll see how it goes. See you soon on all of the events of 2023 and float on.